What's up, everybody? Um, happy Tuesday, and hope everybody had a fantastic Super Bowl, and that was a fantastic game, and I'm glad that it was a great game and uh, really amazing halftime show for me. So very happy about that. Um, we are one day away. Uh, Valentine's Day must love baseball because that is pitchers and catchers reporting tomorrow. So, yay. Um, this may be a short, quick show just because things are pre pretty stagnant in terms of um, huge news across the board, but especially for the Braves, they're pretty um, set in stone. Um, but um, we do this every Tuesday, so let's just still have some fun with it. And I'm going to wait until uh, a few people get in here. Um, pretty... Um, the biggest news is probably former Brave Jorge Soler inked a three-year, $42 million contract with the San Francisco Giants. Um, good for Soler, and I think he was holding out for that third year. So that was very um, – what's up, Charles? Uh, so that was very, very good for him, 36 homers last year. Hopefully he can avoid the – Back and back and nagging injuries that got him last year with Miami, because uh, San Francisco is pretty had a pretty sneaky off season. Um, I don't know that it it definitely I don't know if it puts a dent in um, the Dodgers. Obviously, from a flashy standpoint, but you like I think you like what. Um, San Francisco's done for sure. And really happy that I can cheer for Jorge um, a little bit more than typical. Just so he, and obviously not when he plays the Braves, but we're always going to have a special place in my heart for um, Soler and what he did for, for us in 2021. Um, another big. Uh, big story today was happy birthday. Uh, that's cool that uh, your birthday is when, when baseball stuff gets going. That's awesome. Happy birthday. Hope it's a great one on Friday. Uh, we See, hey, CJ, we've talked about this a lot, that I feel like the writing is on the wall, um, that he's not going to be back, and let's just enjoy this year. What's up, Jesse? Um, he's just, it's, it's the writing's on the wall that he's not going to be back, but, I mean, things can change. But uh, let's just enjoy this year and, and, and go with that. And if something, and I'm, I want to be wrong, but um, it is what it is. Um, and good for Max. Whatever happens, happens. And let's just go out with a World Series championship and then figure out 2025 as it comes. But that's just a reality. Um, I think this is the first time. Uh, Jesse's been here, so that's that's cool. I love love seeing new new faces and um, new support, so that's that's much appreciated. Um, I hope you're right, CJ. I, I really hope you're right. Um, I gave you the update on Ian Anderson last week. Ian Anderson is gonna be. Recovering from Tommy John surgery probably won't be back until June, but recovering nonetheless. Um, 
The only other significant news is probably Ginny Kavanaugh uh, is the first female play-by-play uh, analyst, and she will be for the Oakland A's. But, uh, so that is really cool. I love um, women breaking through some walls in uh, in sports big time, and, and she was really solid with the Rockies last year. Um, when she filled in and then she went, I believe she went to the A's and filled in a little bit <coughs> there as well. Excuse me. Um, um, that's, and I do want to say something about, uh, Bryce Elder because I think people are turned off by what he did. Um, the second half of last year. Um, yeah, we're all we're all gonna miss Wash with the Angels, um, but we can cheer for him. Just not when he plays the Braves. But Wash is always gonna be a favorite. Um, but I wanted to address the Bryce Elder of it all because uh, Braves beat writers and everybody thinks that. It's going to be Ronaldo Lopez to take that fifth spot. And I don't know that that's the right way to look at Ronaldo Lopez. And I've said this so much, um, so much in my videos and, and my thinking is that Ronaldo Lopez is going to be the Colin McHugh. I'm not saying that he can't start or be a spot starter for, for some for some bullpen games, I'm not going to call it a bullpen game, but for some where you can shorten it like that. But let's just be real. Bryce Elder saved the first half of the season in terms of stability in the rotation because the way Jared Schuster and Dylan Dodge struggled um, and then Bryce Elder took that fifth spot by, by the throat and um, pitched a heck of a first half and an all-star first half and a well-earned all-star first half. But let's be real. His first season was 2020 where he didn't have the full workload of, of a MLB season, and he'd been in college uh, the year prior with Texas, fifth-round pick. And it's kind of really hard to figure out how to manage your arm, how to manage your routines as a pitcher in the uh, major leagues, especially when the book comes out on you and uh, teams make adjustments. You got to make those adjustments back, and it's not always going to be roses when that happens. And, yeah, he did have an inconsistent second half, no doubt about it. But – um I think that people are kind of discounting it, and I think that a full off season um, and Bryce, Bryce Elder getting a chance to um, Bryce Elder getting a chance to figure those things out full off season, understanding his body better, um, pitching as many innings as he did last year, um, and I get that. If he starts the season in the minors, even if it's a couple of games, you get an extra year of control. And there's always a manipulation there. But the Braves have shown in the past that um, the Braves have shown in the past that they don't really give a crap about uh, service time. And because if if Bryce Elder is the best guy coming out of spring training, that isn't going to change. And I think Ronaldo Lopez is going to pitch in multiple multiple roles very important but and some of them could be spot starts but um just realize that he hasn't really been in the starting rotation role and what I just said about Bryce Elder having to um use all of that stuff um the arms the innings the velocity all of that is going to come into play for Ronaldo Lopez as well. So let's just pump the brakes on Bryce Elder 
not being a part of the rotation to at any point this year. And that the Ronaldo Lopez, I love the addition, and it may he may be the fifth starter. I'm not saying he won't, but let's just kind of look at both situations the way they are. Um, yes, they have changed the pitch clock. The pitch clock, I think it's what um, they took a few seconds off with runners on. I think it's 18 seconds instead of 20. Um, and it's just another adjustment to that. Uh, I don't, I think it's a little too quick to make the adjustment, but it's just another thing that pitchers uh, will have to adapt to. And for the most part, everybody did adapt to the pitch clock and, and, and enjoyed it. Um, but I think it's a little quick to, but regardless, it's here to stay. So um, that is what it is, uh, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I don't. I it might play factor definitely because the the biggest situations are with runners on. But uh, pitchers were able to make the adjustments uh, all of last year, and I don't think. And I don't think uh, this this will be any different. Um, so, yeah, the pitch clock stuff is true. Um, I think that's – you keep tinkering with something. It is what it is. But and we'll see how it plays out and whether they tinker it back or what they do. But we'll start seeing we'll start seeing that stuff uh, tomorrow. Uh, no, I do not think the extra inning rule will go away. I think the players like it. I think it's good for the regular season. I know people don't really like it, but I think it preserves a lot better baseball down the stretch of of games than as long as they don't put it in the playoffs, I'm good. Because I think that 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 definitely waters down the results. You still have quality strategy with uh, the extra innings and all of that, so I'm going with that. <clears throat> I obviously, once again, you can tinker with with rules left, right, and center if you want to, but um, I think I think everybody enjoys it for the most part, and especially the players and the coaches and and all all of that. So I don't think it will change anytime soon. Um, but yeah, just, uh, everything's pretty cut and dry for the Braves right now, but I did want to, uh, give my endorsement to Bryce Elder because I just feel like, uh, the, the overreaction to a, uh, inconsistent second half, I think, was a little, um, little not needed, um, and uh, I just wanted to say that. Obviously, um, things can change, and and that's one thing that that everybody will be looking for in spring training once the games get underway and stuff. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to give uh, give credit where credit is due for Bryce Elder and not, and not over slash underreact to um, to everybody's love of Renato Lopez, which I love him too. But I just think he's better in the Colin McHugh 
uh, role of um, role of multifaceted role. Uh, that's a better word for it. Um, yeah. I've mentioned this a lot. Hey, Jim. I've mentioned this a lot with Aaron Bummer. You got to take his stats with a grain of salt because he was pitching behind one of the worst defenses in baseball, and he was put in absolutely no-win situations and a lot of things. The um, the extra advanced advanced stats and the extra analytical stats um, like FIP, uh, things that he can control. His FIP was uh, three points th uh, in the low threes. FIP is fielding independent pitching, which is things that the pitcher can control. Hits, walks, homers, hit batters, things of that nature. And when that number is three or less or three and a half, that is a good thing. And that's where you got to look for Aaron Bummer and just realize that he was in a crappy, crappy situation with the White Sox when they're rebuilding. And and you don't really have a lot of options coming out of the bullpen. Uh, <clears throat> Bummer got stuck with a lot of, a lot of things. And the defense was another one that – um, was not, was not good at all, um, for Aaron Bummer and the other White Sox pitchers. So again, take that with a grain of salt. Um, well, <clears throat> um, I believe Jesse Winker, a former Red Brewer um, inked a deal with the Nationals. He's kind of had a fall off, but he's an interesting one to follow for the Nats in there. He's like another kind of Joey Gallo, and they signed Joey Gallo to a one-year $5 million contract. So uh, the Nats could continue to be scrappy um, for sure. Um, but hopefully, uh, I'll have a lot more, um, topics to talk about and things of that nature in the coming weeks, um, with spring training getting underway tomorrow and things of that nature, but it's, it's still slow because of Scott Boris, um, The backup outfielder will be, uh, no, we don't know, but the options are, as of now, Eli White, Forrest Wall, um, Jordan Luplo, um, Martina, J.P. Martinez. Uh, not a lot of, not a lot of big name options, but um, obviously, there's still there's still time for things to happen and, and um you know Alexanthopolis is always working. Um plus like I like I uh was saying there's still a lot of big free agents out there due to um Scott Boris, most of them being Scott Boris's clients, Blake Snell, Jordan Montgomery, um Cody Bellinger. Those those guys are still out there, um, which is kind of gross and insane. But again, I'm not going to pour too much cold water on them because they're trying to get the best situation for them, for themselves, their families, and and everything in their career. So I can't um, speak fully to that. But it feels it feels ugly that um, those. 
such big names haven't signed yet. It just feels feels wrong and weird, and and I don't think it's <laughs> necessarily the greatest thing for baseball. Uh, nope. We did not. I mean, Chadwick Trump will be our third, our third catcher option for the, um, and and Drake Baldwin is our big catching prospect. He will be in in camp, but it will be um Sean Murphy and Travis Darno um for as far as I know, and for as long as for definitely this year. And Sean Murphy will be around for a while, so he's always he's going to be the main option. Um. Nope, but uh, Chadwick Trump is back in our organization as the pretty good third catcher. So, yeah, I think we're solid at catcher. Um, and obviously, there's still a lot of depth and things that could happen. Um, and like I said, there's still s several solid, um, several solid free agents still out there that can help a lot of a lot of people um and it's just a little weird how slow uh how slow everything is in in um free agency i did forget that yasmani rondal signed a two and a half million dollar deal with the pirates the pirates could be a little sneaky they got bednar and Arola Chapman at the back end of their bullpen. And Grandal is a pretty uh, nice veteran catcher. And Mitch Keller, a really solid, um, really solid uh, ace and some young guys <coughs> coming up. Excuse me. Um, yeah, uh, the and and David Fletcher also could play a part in the utility infielder slash outfielder position as well. Um, we have three forty spots still available on the roster, plus um, three guys that are uh, Perdomo, Angel Perdomo, reliever, Pin Murphy, reliever, and Ian Anderson. All of those guys are going to be placed on the 60-day IL. Um, so there still could be some moving and grooving as those guys are recovering from Tommy John surgery. Um, so that's, um, that's a thing for sure. Um, so that would put us at six six open spots. Um, interestingly, in the bullpen, probably is Tyler Matzik not having any options left. Um, so it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how he progresses from Tommy John surgery and um, uh, what happens with his role um, because we can't just we can't just send him out because he, he would then be put on waivers um, uh, thanks Charles I, I've been just trying to come up with with content um, that that is interesting given um given the the lack of news that we've had just because the Braves are 97.5% set um 
and obviously um, good spring trainings and all that stuff could could alter the plans, but still 97.5% set. So there hasn't been a, a reason for a lot of news. Um, and then Major League Baseball just being a little slow because of Scott Boris's clients. Um, that's why. So coming up with content, has been a little – just had to uh, – Go in the creative juices a little more than a little more than probably anticipated at this time of year, but I don't mind it, and uh, I appreciate the support and all that uh, for for this for. Uh, for that for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I'm really excited to get things going and, and have actual baseball um, things to talk about instead of instead of speculation and and. Things like that, just because I'm terrible at it. Um, I'm better at, I've said this a lot, but better at um, analyzing the moves uh, instead of speculating them. But uh, you do things you got, you, you're not anticipating to do when, when there's not a lot, when there's not necessarily a lot going on. Wow. So, and I don't mind it at all. Plus, tomorrow, everybody reports and everybody reports and whatnot. Um, the Marlins not signing any, like, any free agents for any money is ridiculous. The only significant moves. The only significant moves they've made is minor league deals and a couple of trades um, for... Minor league deal for Trey Mancini, former first baseman for the Orioles and Astros. Um, they just signed Yanni Chirinos, former Brave, um, that we tried for um, innings eater veteran type of guy that t didn't really work like we wanted it to um, just now to a minor league deal. Uh, they did pick up, uh, I believe, Nick Gordon, the shortstop from, uh, or one of the shortstops from the Minnesota Twins for left-handed pitcher Stephen Okard. Um, so there's really not, um, the Marlins haven't spent a dime uh, to make their team better, and honestly, that's really sad considering they made the playoffs last year. Um, it's really, really sad. Uh, but apparently they're in a lot of debt that, um, that no one can fix or no one can – explain or they can explain it but I guess it's not an easy fix and it's just weird for for that organization and city and all that jazz so it's it's sad though um and there was a report that the Phillies and the Red Sox were talking about Kenley Jansen trade and the Red Sox are weird. I've talked about them a lot. I just don't get that. I If you're doing a rebuild, fine. But 
the mixed messages that they've sent the fans is kind of is kind of a really bad look for a storied franchise and rebuilds are fine but just not coming straight out and saying it and and really getting scraps not saying that uh Lucas Giolito and and Vaughn Grisham will play big roles and I really think Vaughn Grisham is a good fit for the Red Sox and what they need I just think that um the messaging to everybody including players that wanted to go there is just a uh, a really bad look J.D. Martinez hasn't signed anywhere either. Um, so that's... So that's another free agent. See, guy, I thought I forgot. Um... Um, and I guess I said this, um, the stream might have been hard to come up with talk topics, so I appreciate the the conversation flowers, but I think we're um, but I really love love doing these. Um, it's just kind of hard when there's not yeah, not a lot going on. Um, but I did hear that the Padres are, are garnering interest on how Sung Kim, who's said to be a free agent after this year. So that could be interesting. I don't know how, uh, valid that report is at all, but, um, Bodges definitely had the most interesting, and prob they're probably going to be one of the more interesting teams to follow, just because I don't think it's bad, and they have a lot of, they still have a lot of stars, Xander Bogarts, Manny Machado, Fernando Tatis, um, so, and they, they picked up a lot of interesting pieces for the bullpen, and for the starting rotation, and um, in the Juan Soto deal, getting Michael King and, and Wandy Peralta, just interesting deals, um, with a lot of player opt-outs and a couple of, uh, Korean relief stars as well. So definitely a very interesting, um, team to follow for sure with a new manager, um, and Mike Schilt, the former manager for the St. Louis Cardinals. So we'll see how that gels. But there's a little less personality in in that locker room to to combat with with the Lon Soto trade. So maybe things will gel a little bit better.
Um, And the Reds have had a really interesting offseason. Like, they cornered the market on all um, infielders. And I don't know what they're going to do with them all. I still think that Jonathan India, who signed – recently signed a two-year deal with the Reds to avoid arbitration. I feel like he's still going to get traded just because of the litany of infield prospects they have. Um, com combined with, um, combined with uh, the, the major league talent they already have, it just – a lot of quality guys for not on enough spots kind of thing. So they're probably going to be interesting to watch going into spring training. And like I said, or continue to say, there's so many quality guys still out there. Um, Matt Chapman as well. The Blue Jays really haven't made a splash after missing out on Otani. Um, not really sure how that'll go. But those two, and obviously the Cubs, everybody thinks Bellinger's going back there eventually, but that hasn't um, resolved itself either. So there's there's still a lot yet to be uh, determined for sure. So, um, so, and I'll have all of that covered. I have no idea what Steve Avery is doing now. He's all, he's always at our alumni stuff. Um, uh, but Matthew's a better, a better guy for all of that stuff. I'm, I, I'm well versed in, in what the guys we have are doing now, not the, um, not the alumni as much. Um, not that I don't keep track. It's just like harder to unless... Something comes out news wise. Um. But uh, it should be it probably is going to be an active 24 to 48 hours um, with the fact that the Dodgers are already in spring training because they have an international game on March 20th to begin the year and the 60-day IL um, stuff can start tomorrow to open up roster spots and and. Um, 
have sort of a roster cleaning, so to speak, and things of that nature. Um, so maybe I should have moved my show to tomorrow, but also tomorrow's Valentine's Day, so you, you, what you gonna do? But regardless, I'll have it all covered and Uh, the chances of a six-man rotation, at least there, it's not going to be early on, um, not at all, uh, because we don't need a fifth starter for uh, the first couple of weeks, I believe, given how the off days have gone, but I mean, it could happen, um, it, it could happen at some points during the season, but I really, um, but to start, no, I don't think. I don't think uh, much of it. So, I mean, it definitely could happen depending depending on injuries or or um, giving guys rest at times or whatnot. That's definitely could be a possibility. Uh, yeah, but I'm really, really excited. And it's, uh, Um, getting to cover another year, super awesome. You never know what's going to happen, so that's always... So that's always a uh, fun thing. See how many predictions you have and how many times it's wrong and how many times it's right and all that stuff. That's always, <coughs> that's always a blast. Excuse me. Um. But like literally, I think we've had the same questions um, for the last three or four weeks just because uh, we're not going to find out those questions until games start and things start happening. So, and I guess that's a really good problem to have because you trust what your roster is at this point. Definitely. Um, and the less and less you have to do with your roster, uh, in the better spot you are. So. I definitely appreciate that. Um, and Alex Anthopoulos always, always keeps me busy in the early, in the early portions of, of the off season for sure. And helps with the helps with the content creation and all of that stuff. Thank you, Charles. Um, I'm I'm glad. Uh, so, um. Um, but yeah. Uh, 
Um. Um. <sighs> What's up, Matthew? Um, I kind of covered, um, uh, covered everything that mainly happened today, but or mainly happened today, and and uh, uh but like. Like I said, it could be active 24 to 48 hours with the 60-day IL thing and opening up spots and things of that nature. So, um, Oh, and Jesse Chavez did um, sign a minor league deal with the White Sox. So they're literally becoming Chicago, Chicago Braves a little bit. And I think I mentioned this earlier, but Bryce Elder shouldn't be getting as much flack as he is. Uh, yeah, Solaire to the Giants. Um, three forty-two, so really good deal for Solaire, um, for sure. Um. And we could cheer for him a little bit more. Um, so there's that as well. Um, um, but yeah, Bryce Elder is getting too much flack uh, for his inconsistent second half. And I think people are discounting him a little too much. I mentioned that at the beginning. Um, and again, there's still a lot of... Um, there's there's a good bit of competition and things to... Things to figure out, but it's like the fringe... Fringe portions of the roster and, and such like that. So that's... Uh, that's a thing. Um, and fringe, fringe roster spots may not seem like much, but they always come up big, whatever, whatever, um, whenever that happens for sure. Um, so, and like I said, Michael A. Taylor, I didn't say it, but Michael A. Taylor's still out there. One of my favorite guys to think about for for the Braves, uh, for sure. Um, but he had 21 homers last year, so that might not be um, might not be in the cards for him, just because he might want to play a little bit more. So we'll see how that goes. Um, not sure. Um, but I'm, I'm guessing there's not a lot of veteran type of pitchers left on the market. Uh, cause you know, I've talked about that a lot, possibly, um, possibly adding a, a guy like that. But it doesn't sound like there's too much of that on the market. It's just the heavy hitters that are left. But um, uh, but uh, it's going to be interesting. Probably the most interesting guys to watch in spring training 
Ronaldo Lopez, because everybody's drinking the Kool-Aid of him being the fifth starter. Uh, Ray Kerr, for me, the lefty we acquired from the Padres. Um, Jared Kelnick, Chris Sale, for obvious reasons. And I think Forrest Wall is a dark horse. I've talked about him a little bit in my top five series, um, that he could possibly be the fourth outfielder. So, um, 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 so if there's any questions or topics, um, I always try to get these to an hour, so, uh, just helps out likes, watch hours, all that stuff. And, and I don't want to miss anything. Um, so sorry for a little bit <clears throat> more of the dead air, um, but. It's just been it's just been kind of slow because of the Super Bowl and Scott Boris and all that jazz. So, um, um, but yeah, so. Um, but I, <clears throat> um, I think the best off seasons, I think we've had a good one. I would give it a B. I think we, I think I would give it a B. I think, um, you could have added a little bit more to starting pitching, but again, um, when you don't. When you don't have too many spots to fill, that's and having Spencer Strider, Max Reed, uh, Chris Sale, Charlie Morton, that's not a bad four. Obviously, health is, is a concern, so you, you want more of a top end uh, rotation guy just because of what's coming down the pipe in 2025. But I think we've done a nice job of of getting a little more grit and a little more spice to and personality um, to the team as well. That's that's gonna be nice. And um, obviously <coughs> some prospects could come out of nowhere and give us a shot in the arm um, as they have the last handful of years. Uh, so that's really good for sure um, and exciting as well. I mean, you, you, got, you got a ton. Even though our farm system isn't as deep, um, you still got a ton of fascinating stories and names to watch in spring training um, then as well. So that's, that's big time. Um, um, yeah, but uh, yeah, but um, hope everybody has a great Valentine's Day tomorrow and happy uh, pitchers and catchers reporting day and uh, all that stuff and I uh, can't wait to can't to, can't wait to report it all for you guys. And talk about it and have a lot of fun this year. I'm trying to figure out uh, the best the best live watches, uh, that type of schedule and stuff. Because I'm covering uh, the Panthers, the Hurricanes, um, the Charlotte Hornets, who have gotten more exciting since the trade deadline. So that's, that's fun. Um, but obviously my main... Um, 
My main focus will be, and is always, the Braves. But I'll just be juggling a little bit more. So there might not be um, too many live watches at the beginning of the year. But I love doing them. So I'm going to figure out how to fit it in. Um, I love what I do. So, um, um, yeah. So there's that. I think... I think the San Francisco's had a really uh, solid offseason. I think the Seattle's had an interesting one. I like what I've liked what Arizona's done as well. Uh, the worst ones to me have been bar none, the Red Sox and Marlins. Uh, Who? You mean Kelnick? He'll probably hit in the seven seven spot ish. Um, he'll probably hit in the seven spot for for the way the left right yeah the seven spot probably. Um. Seven spot probably fits because you've got uh, or eight spot, seven or eight. RCN eight or nine and Michael Harris. If you want the speed element at the bottom of the lineup, then uh, nine. Um We've seen Michael Harris. We've seen Orlando RC at nine, but I would say Jared Kilnick seven or eight, depending on the pitcher, who's hot, that kind of thing. But it'll probably be uh, pretty similar to what we've seen uh, the last few years. It's super deep regardless. Um, so that, that, that's going to be a fun development and just fun to see how it goes, but I think it's pretty standard. You got Ronald, Ozzy, um, uh, Riley, Matt. Uh, maybe Michael Harris at five, but you could also put, um, the one or two of the catchers there, that type of thing. Uh, but it's, it's a deep and it's a, well, now the Marcelo Zuna, but yeah. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be fun, um, and a lot of obviously uh, health is gonna be key. It's key for everyone, but it's also key for all of us not to overreact or underreact to whatever happens in spring training because a lot of things change even the day. Uh, Even the day of the roster un, un, um, unveiling, things things are very fluid and they change quickly. So let's just try not to underreact or overreact to uh, anything that happens. Um, I'm telling myself that just as much as anyone else. <laughs> Because we all like to drink the Kool-Aid and, and things of that nature. But I think we're going to be an amazing team, very solid, and it's going to be a fun ride. And I can't wait to, to get it going. Um, but as always, go Braves. Champions forever. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Helps out a lot.
Thanks, guys. See y'all next Tuesday. Um, I promise we'll have a ton to talk about then. Um, I may start these at like 7.30 um, because it seems to have a little bit more engagement um, and a little bit more like people coming in and, and um, YouTube might have a chance to, to alert people quicker. Um, so I may do that as well. Um, just to, just to experiment and see, but I appreciate all the, all the support as always. And, uh, I always like to see new faces, so that's always cool as well. But, uh, I will see you guys next Tuesday. Have a great night.